let's transition into our second question. I mean, the reality is uh, unemployment is high. Uh, I'm going to read a quote from the Canadian Center for Policy Alternatives that did a report on youth unemployment in particular. Uh, this was in 2013. And they said that uh, one of uh, Ontario's hot spots for youth unemployment was, in fact, Oshawa, as along with other two other municipalities in the province. Uh, and they said unemployment rates for youth was well over 20%. Now, it's already a difficult job market, and many of our youth here at the Refuge struggle with criminal records and no fixed addresses. If you add that to the mix, I mean, the chance of landing a job, uh, let's be real, is, is only slightly better than the Leafs winning the Stanley Cup this year. The reality is, it is hard, and I just saw a, a Durham Regional Police report uh, this afternoon that came on Megan's phone, and she showed us, Megan's one of her staff members, and it was about a, a young man who was um, um, charged and arrested for attacking someone with a machete here in Oshawa. Yeah. And that was one of our young men who attended the refuge many years ago. who have been very frustrated and continues to be frustrated because he can't find work. And he wants to work and support. And something must have snapped. I don't know why, I don't know what happened. But I do know that jobs were a frustration for that young man. So if you were elected mayor, what are your plans to address Unemployment as well as youth unemployment. Chris Tom. Well, further to what I said on my previous uh, answer, that if we can get grants given to young people that get into school, then we also need to look about, about trying to get businesses here involving research and development and high-tech jobs, because the 407, of course, in North End is being built. We have uh, the university there and, the Dur and Durham College. So we should be able to use our, our communication skills and our contacts nationally and internationally to attract with tax incentives and fee incentives research and development and high tech firms in order to have those students who graduate if they get grant money to go to school and to find jobs that will be well paying and keep them in Oshawa because that's key we must not you lose our youth because then our future is not going to be there. So I think it's, it's, it's both. It's education, but also the, the availability of, of jobs, high-tech jobs, not manufacturing jobs, uh, making not manufacturing, service industry jobs, making minimum wage. I know there's lot, lots of work going on over at the, the Costco mall, but th these jobs are, are minimum wage. And uh, retail, it's, it's part-time hours and minimum wage. We need to have jobs that are available, which are reflective of what the students are learning in the university and the college. And that's what's bad in using Oshawa. Thank you, Bill Longworth. You know, I have a feeling that when we see kids living in the street, it's not something they want to do. When I see kids involved in prostitution, it's not something they want to do. When we see kids involved in crime, it's not something they want to do. But by gosh, they have to eat. And if that's the only way to get money to eat, they're going to do it. And so if we have a crime problem, part of it is kids don't have, the, even the, the, the jobs at Costco or the jobs at McDonald's, you know, which, which are starter jobs, but they have to have some source of income in order to live. You see, as an educator, I always felt that every child wanted to be good. Every child. Maybe Lou was different. <laughs> <laughs> every child wanted to be good, and they would rather get their positive reinforcement from doing something good rather than doing something bad. And so as an educator, I observed that the child that was the behavior problem was the behavior problem because he wasn't getting enough recognition from the teacher for his contribution to class. So I didn't teach very long. I taught for six years before I got promoted, which is hey, you can I'm, unheard of. I never, ever told a child he was wrong. I would move on to the next child and say, have you got an answer, so-and-so? Have you got an answer? Because everybody needs a chance to get some positive reinforcement. Perfect note to end on. John Gray. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, first of all, I don't want to create the notion that 
the city has this great toolkit available to it to create all these jobs. Because uh, the only jobs we create are with employees themselves. Uh, but we can do things like be very, very business friendly uh, to create the jobs that we need in our community. But you know, I think the, the systemic problem is that there's now a lack of good paying entry level positions. Uh, back when I was in high school, I had a friend who was very gifted mathematically. But his father and grandfather had worked at General Motors, so he aspired to work at General Motors. Well, he did get hired at age uh, 19. He worked there for 30 years, and uh, you know, but he was able to provide very well for his family. Um, without adequate skills now and proper training, um, the prospects for our youth are, are, are become quite diminished. We're into a, we're, we seem to be into a very low wage um, type of economy now, and that hurts our youth. And one of the best things we've got to do is, you know, as parents, as mentors, we got to reinforce the need for real, tangible skills. Uh, that doesn't help the ones that are out of the program, out, out now, but education through the youth, through, through the refuge here, can in, strongly influence them to, to get whatever skills they have. Maybe some of them are very artistic. Let's, our, let's make sure that those skills get honed. Um, we, we 